I am here with Kiara Hogan. You've seen her on Impact Wrestling, but you can see her at Ladies Night Out 3 on August 18th, the bell time of 7.30 in Texas City. It is streaming live on TitleMatchNetwork.com, presented by Title Match Network and Booker T's Reality of Wrestling. Kiara, how are you? I'm very well. How are you? I'm doing good. I'm rather excited for this main event that you have uh, on August 18th. You against Ivelisse. First ever women's cage match in Texas history. That's a that's a big match. Yeah, it definitely is. My first steel cage match, the first women's steel cage match in Texas history. It's a lot of firsts on the 18th. What kind of advice have you gotten, or have you gotten any, from maybe veterans of, of cage match past? Uh, I haven't gotten any advice. Like, I've told like a couple of my peers that I am in a cage match and they ask me am I excited or if I'm scared and I'm like a little bit of both like I'm more I feel like I'm more excited about it just because like you don't see a lot of women's steel cage matches like with WWE they just did the women's first hell in a cell but like I know uh, Victoria Mickey James had one in Impact a long time ago and you know I just feel like women in steel cages aren't really a, a thing but it's also, like, part of the evolution, I guess, like, us being able to do these different things, and I think we'll kill it, like, no matter how it goes, like, I think we're, we're going to kill it, like, for us to be in this position and to be able to put on this match at Booker T School is amazing, but, like, to be a part of it, period, is amazing, but I haven't gotten any, like, real advice, I've just been telling people I'm in a steel cage match and that I'm excited. <laughs> You're in there with Eva Lise, who is all too excited to get violent in very innovative ways. How about yourself? Are there things that you're thinking of and you're like, okay, if I get her in this position, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. Maybe I'm going to do this that nobody's seen before. Uh, when I'm in a match with Eva Lise, I would expect nothing less. Um, I haven't really – I mean, I've, like, done my research on steel cage matches, like – kind of ideas that I've been thinking about. Um, I've only been in a couple of weapons matches. I did one at Fest called the Hardcore Hunt, and I found the stapler. Um, and I've only had, like, a, a couple of steel chair shots. So, I mean, I'm pretty new to the hardcore side of wrestling. Like, I'm more traditional, old-school grappler style. Um, so to be in a match like this and to be able to be in a match like this I'm I'm pretty green, like I'm pretty new at it. So most of the things that I do will be a surprise for the fans and for myself. <laughs> Last time I talked to you, you let me know that your contract with Impact is up the end of June. You expressed your desire to stay with the company. I know you were at their last set of tapings. Uh, have you resigned with them? Um, I have not done a contract resigning. I think my optional um, my optional agreement just rolled over mm -hmm. since I ended up staying. Like, even if I didn't sign a contract, I would still come. Like, I yeah. just, I love Impact that much. Like, I love the position that I'm in. I love the, the, the company that I'm with. I love the people that I work for. Like, no matter what the outcome was, I feel like I would still show up no matter what. Um, and I've been booked for uh, future dates, too. So I think it just rolled over, but I'm still knockout. <laughs> you know, it's funny because, you know, virtually everybody who's working for a company will say, oh, I like that company. I love that company. There are actually videos of you that surfaced when you were a teenager talking about how much you loved Impact Wrestling and the knockouts. I know that those have kind of popped back up. How often do you do you see those reemerge? Because you're, you're at the age, you're 23, where stuff that you filmed, like little vlogs and, and stuff like that, they're going to they're gonna pop up. I mean, you, you've been <laughs> on camera for years already. Oh, my God. Like, to even see them pop back up is weird to me because when I put them up initially when I was, like, 16, 17 years old, like, I had no idea who would watch them. I didn't think anybody would watch them. And to now be a wrestler and to, be, and to have talked about a company that I ended up working for, it, it's just – I just feel like that's full circle. That's just the universe working. Like, as much as I loved TNA, as much as I loved talking about it, as much as I loved watching it, I'm now able to love it and be a part of it like and that just increases my love that much more for it because it just ended up being for full circle like I've had videos I still have videos on my YouTube like I'm oh, doing looked. makeup I, I definitely looked when that oh, one <laughs> that one reemerged. I definitely checked it out <laughs> yeah like 
I talk about all kinds of stuff. I was talking about like Twilight and lots of things in pop culture and WWE, but like, I don't know, like I don't have any like skeletons, like as far as my vlogs go, because everything was so innocent. Like I just wanted to express my love for things that I, I didn't get to talk to people in, in my life about, because I was always like, I have friends in high school, but I was always kind of like, an outcast I guess you would say like I played soccer like I wasn't like on the cheerleading squad or the dance team I played soccer I played a, a tough contact sport and like the things that I like people didn't really like where I'm from like I always felt like I was the black sheep in my family I've always thought that I just loved things that people around me didn't love like my best friend did of course because that's how we became best friends is we loved the same things but like to be able to express something so that I obsessed over to people that eventually we're going to bring it back up and see that I was a huge fan of wrestling and to be a wrestler. I love it. Like I love that people, even now at impact tapings, people are like, Oh yeah, I remember seeing that blog. And I'm like, Oh my God, you <laughs> saw that. <laughs> yeah. There are a lot of people who, awesome. there are a lot of people who have things emerge, like whether it be leaks or, or old tweets that might cost them their job. Meanwhile, you've got things that are emerging that are like, eight years in the past where you're like, Hey, I really love this company that I'm going to end up working up working for in eight years. Have you gotten any feedback from in any, like maybe people at impact wrestling about that? Because I could see them using that on the program, like in vignettes in the future. I would love if they did that. Um, I have it. Like people have come up to me, um, not at this last set of taping, the ones when we were in Windsor, um, that's when it first kind of popped up. People would come up to me backstage and be like, oh, oh my God, I saw that blog. That's so crazy. Like, I know. And I'm just like, I know. I can't believe like people are watching it. People at my job are watching it. And like, <laughs> my mom is like, when did you record this? And I'm like, I don't remember. Like, I just sit in my room on like her iPad or my laptop and just make videos. But like, I would love if they used them in vignettes and promos and stuff like that. Cause I, like, I love to express that. I loved this business before I was ever a part of it. Like I knew since I was 14 that I wanted to be a wrestler. Like that's all I wanted to do. That's all I wanted to be a part of was to be a part of wrestling because that's how much I loved it. And I still do love it. And like to even be in this position, I keep expressing like how grateful I am to even be in this position. We, we mentioned Impact Wrestling, a big part of that. I actually saw an interview where you talked about, I think working with Gail Kim backstage how much of an influence is she, uh, and how much input does she give you? Uh, Gail Kim is very hands-on. She is completely hands-on. She's the agent for the knockout division. So she is like the head of our division. She runs everything. She is very hands-on. She still loves wrestling. If Gail Kim could lace up her boots and get on that TV or get in that ring, she definitely would, like, no doubt. Like, she is just so in love with wrestling it's it's crazy and that's what I love most about her is her love for it like I've talked to her multiple times and she just has so much passion for it and she like even though she can't do it I can still just see it radiates off how much passion she has for this business I remember you you told me about your WWE tryout and you you pitched your girl on fire gimmick there not too long after that, you see Ember Moon have sort of a similar gimmick, at least at least some of the mentions of, you know, the terms are going to be similar when you, you run those two together. Was that something that you saw and you were like, maybe you inspired that a little bit? Um, I know for a fact I'm probably the reason she did it, um, which is, it actually was, I try not, it, I try not to look at it in a negative way, but and in the end, it is negative because it's something that I did first. That's something that I brought to my company first. Like, And even now, since she's done it, because she debuted it at NXT TakeOver Mania Weekend, mm -hmm. and I remember like, I watched TakeOver, and I saw her come out, and I, my heart literally dropped because I was just like, I just I knew what was coming after that, and I've gotten tweets. DMs, comments, people just saying, oh, you're the ripoff version of Ember Moon. Oh, you're Impact's version. Oh, you're the, the cheap version of Ember Moon. So now because she's taken something that I've worked so hard to make my own, I'm now the ripoff version of her. So in retrospect, it's just like you st 
stole something from me and like doesn't acknowledge that she did because of course she's probably not but it's just like I worked so hard to get to where I am as me being the girl on fire as this being my brand and now I'm the ripoff version of her like it it hurts me it hurts like all of the work that I put into this character and you know like I'm not going to give up I'm going to keep making myself different I'm going to keep making myself stand out like and I even know they started calling Becky Lynch the girl on fire like they even started using my hashtags and stuff so I don't I mean like do you think that's something that, that came from them or, do, or like WWE or do you oh, think definitely that... not definitely not definitely not I know that they watch I know that they do Oh, I, I know mean, they I meant them as a company as opposed to the individuals, Becky Lynch and Ember Moon. I think the Girl on Fire thing came from WWE. Like, they gave that to her, but Ember Moon, I guarantee you, she probably came up with it herself and was like, oh, you know, I think this will be a good idea because I'm doing the moon, the eclipse thing or whatever she's doing. Like, I, just, I, I don't know. Like, I know she came up with that. Like, she was at my tryout. And we talked. I saw her sign her contract. She cried when she signed her contract. I was there for that moment. And, like, after the tryout, she called me or texted me and was like, hey, I want to help you get books on shows, blah, blah, blah. And after that, I had never spoken to her. And that was, like, almost four years ago. I haven't talked to her in four years. And I, like, it, I just, I know she got the inspiration for me. And it also doesn't help because we're two black females. So I automatically get compared to her yeah the comparison i mean and i re actually I remember hearing about you pitching that gimmick uh i think it was was it 2015 mm -hmm. when i would speak to people who yeah. were at tryouts they would tell me certain things and i remember hearing about that back then and you, the comparisons are, are you know, obviously going to be there do you think that hindered your chances of getting back in wwe i know you're happy in impact but have you heard anything from them since then um i don't think it hindered my opportunity um i heard the last time i talked to or last time i got an email was maybe a year maybe a year and a half almost two years ago um i was actually at a raw event in atlanta uh, me and my boyfriend and i had emailed someone and i didn't get a response back but somebody sent me an email saying that they needed um, new information, I guess, like new promo pictures, new, like, I guess, uh, updated resume. Yeah. So I sent it in and they were like, okay, we'll contact you for a future tryout. Nothing. Um, and then I did extras maybe a couple months after that. It was a couple summers ago. Um, I did extras and somebody came up to me backstage and asked if I was going to be in the classic. And I was like, no, nobody has contacted me about the classic. And that was the last time that I ever went or did anything with WWE so I kind of just let it I kind of just let it fizzle out I was like I'm just gonna do my own thing like if they contact me that's awesome if they don't I'll keep working like I'm gonna keep doing me I'm gonna keep working hard because eventually you know I would love to be there um but impact knocked on my door first and I took that opportunity did you ever hear Matt Hardy's very similar story about when he submitted a tryout video to the power plant uh-uh he uh, had the gimmick high voltage and Omega and all that stuff. And he was later mm -hmm. told that the tag team high voltage was a straight up rip off of his name and gimmick. Then he submitted there. I mean, Hey, he ended up doing all right for himself. That's insane. And I, I know that they, especially at tryouts when people do stuff like even in my tryout promo that I did, I said, my name is Kier Hogan. I'm the new Hogan, except with a little bit of fire. So that immediately was my first time using the – well, it wasn't my first time. I had started, like, doing the Girl on Fire gimmick because I had only had, like, six matches before my tryout. So I was starting to use the Girl on Fire because I found something that I really liked, so I started using it. So, But that was in 2015. They didn't do anything yeah. with it. But I, I definitely do. I've seen – I've heard, like, they do – like, if they see something at tryouts, if they see something – at extra matches like that they like, they'll take it. You had mentioned uh, Hogan with a little bit of fire. Hogan is obviously somebody you're going to be connected to as well because of your last name, which is your real last name. What do you think about him being back in the fold at WWE? Uh, I think it's awesome that he's back. Uh, I know a lot of people, a lot of uh, people were not 
excited for him to be back, but I did hear that he gave a full apology. I've actually never ever spoken to Hulk Hogan as much as people tag us together. He's never like like he did with Velveteen. He was like, oh yeah, I would love to. I would love to manage him, and I'm just like, man, I've been trying to get some kind of response from him since like I started <laughs> wrestling. I remember in high school, people not even high school, middle school, people used to come up to me that I didn't even know and be like, are you related to Hulk Hogan? Like, i will be like, no, I'm not. But like. Yeah, I don't know. Like, I have never been in contact with him. I've never spoken to him. I would love to meet him. I think that would be awesome. Um, but, yeah, like, people automatically attach to the idea of me getting my gimmick my gimmick name from Hulk Hogan, yeah. which I correct him immediately. And I'm like, no, this is on my birth certificate. This is on my driver's license. This is my real name. And the reason I kept my real name, because I started as an announcer, interviewer, stuff like that, I wanted people to be able to go back and see the evolution of me as from being from starting out to now going into a wrestler. So people can go back and look me up and I pop up on PWX and WWA four and stuff as an interviewer and announcer. So that's why I ultimately kept my name. And considering the gimmick, you have plenty of red and yellow gear. <laughs> yes, of course. So I'm Hogan mania. <laughs> I'm the girl on fire mania. <laughs> Kiera, as we wrap up, tell us a little bit more about uh, Ladies Night Out 3. Well, it's on August 18th. Uh, I'm, I think we're at the World Gym Arena again. Um, it's going to be awesome. I'm so excited. Uh, we have a couple of new faces. Vanna Scott will be there. Thunder Rosa will be there. Uh, Jordan Grace is returning. The uh, Diamond Division champion, High Young, will be there. And, of course, me and Ivelisse will be in the main event, Steel Cage matches. I'm really excited. Booker T seemed really excited about it when it got announced, and he's really excited to see it and be a part of it. So I can't wait, and I hope everybody checks it out. You all can stream that live on TitleMatchNetwork.com. Kiera, thank you so much. You're always an incredible interview. Thank you so much for having me.